All right, so the uh, crank is in the block and we're moving on to the uh, rotating assembly. But before we do that, we got to address some ring fitment. Yeah, so um, we're working here, uh, two different compression rings here. We got the second ring and the top ring. We have okay. to, they both require file fitting. Gotcha. Uh, none of them will, out of the box will be fitted for you. So right. just another step you have to take. Um, so we'll start with the uh, second ring. And uh, what it is, is a Napier. So it's a Napier second. It just means it has a little bit of a hook to it to scrape the oil off of the cylinder walls. Okay. Uh, and both of these rings are 1.2 millimeter. Sorry. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's pretty standard for these pistons. So what we do is just set it in there. This allows you to get perfectly centered and level to, so it's not coming in crooked or anything. You're lining it perfect right every time. And it just sets it in there nice and neat. So what we'll measure. Yeah, you can see it's almost got Yeah, it's, no pretty, gap. it's pretty close to button up together right, right. now. Which what happens if we make that too tight or if we left it like that and installed it? What's going to happen? When uh, it heats up, they will butt together and you've seized your piston yeah, essentially. Seize yeah. it, you'll break a ring, break exactly. a ring land, all kinds of bad things yeah, happen, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So we'll check this. Yeah, it's about three thousands right now. And what are we looking for? So we're looking on the second ring, maybe about 23,000. Okay. So yeah, we need to there. go up another 20,000. Yeah, so. exactly. Just want to do that and check it. All right, so we've got all our uh, upper and lower compression rings filed to fit. Yeah. Let's talk about the oil control rings a little bit. Yeah, so we have a uh, waffle. These are come. You don't need to worry about file fitting these. They are going to come into size perfectly for your board. Okay. Uh, these, it depends on the manufacturer. Uh, these are Hastings rings, but uh, and these come pre-gapped already. Okay. And you want typically at least 15 thousandths gap on these. Um, but a lot of manufacturers won't pre-gap these for you. You'll have to do them yourself. So you always want to check them and see where they're at. Um, the other thing about these in particular is that they always come a little bit dirty. So you want to make sure you properly clean all your piston rings before assembly. Now when you're installing these, you want to make sure that your end gaps on all the rings are never near each other. You want to offset them so that these two gaps are not going to meet each other. And that adds just an extra area for that leak down to come through and that, you know, remove all your pressure. So we'll put one on this corner here. And you don't need to press them apart. You can kind of just roll them around to get to your groove. And they'll just fall into place like that. And it should feel like that. You want to move it around, center it. It should have a nice feel to it. Never lock up anywhere. Just spin freely like that. That's a nice fit there. So after that, we'll grab our number eight. So here's where it's important. We'll start with our second ring. And you want to make sure your little indent there is facing upwards. So we'll take this, go like that, and then we'll roll it. And then just lift it up and pick it in there. Again, it should spin nice and freely, have that free motion. If it feels like it's locking up, chances are you have a burr on where you created your end gap. So you just want to get rid of any burr like that. And we're going to set these, the second ring, bottom of the skirt, top ring, top of the skirt. So we'll go there. Again, roll it. And then you can just pick it up. And it's in. 